Kamala Harris debated an unhinged lunatic last night, and I couldn't help but feel embarrassed that this man has been the nominee for president of the United States now for the third time. He is clearly cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, deranged, confused, uh, a malignant narcissist, and on and on. But it all started right from the jump. You saw an adult walk onto the debate stage, Kamala Harris, who has uh, been a very ambitious, successful, prepared woman her entire life, walk up to this hunched over, uh, disheveled man. His hair kind of had a pink tone to it last night, but I won't digress into that. <laughs> just thought that was interesting. She walks up to him as an adult would, puts her hand out and says, hi, I'm Kamala Harris. Let's have a good debate. He is trying to avoid and turn her from the jump. He's terrified of this woman. He is so weak. He couldn't even meet her at the halfway point. He's so small. Him running from her. And did you notice throughout the course of the debate, he could not look at her. He is disrespectful to decency. He it was jaw dropping his behavior. It was so embarrassing because he traffics in the most extreme areas of the Internet where nothing is true. Let me play this clip for you. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. This is such desperation from his campaign that they have a candidate on the stage that all they can talk about is to scare the white people, the white suburban people that live nowhere near immigration, that these caravans of crazy people that are criminals are coming for them. And it hasn't been penetrating as much as they want. So now they've escalated it, that they're killing and eating cats and dogs. And a candidate for the president of the United States said that on a global stage, this clip will be played all around the world. And then he has the audacity and lacks self-awareness to say the world is laughing at us. And it's like, no dipshit. They're laughing at you because you are so incredibly unhinged, bizarre, and traffic in these weird QAnon, the most bottom feeding sex of American culture. That's their guy. The fear mongering is taken to a new level. And what I particularly liked was David Muir said, that's not true. I talked to the city manager. Well, I saw it on TV. Well, not everything you see on Fox News is true. Newsflash. But the cats and the dogs, it's just more fear mongering. It's despicable that he would say that on a global stage. It's insanity. And it's like somebody said this when he ran in 2016, and it's still true today. You have a low information voter at the top of the ticket. I mean, that is a complete <laughs> low information voter statement, what he said. So then, you know, they're trying to talk about policy. The moderators are engaging the candidates to talk about policy. Trump has talked about this beautiful health care plan that he's going to have, that he's going to roll out since 2015. On into 2016, he's going to roll out the best health care plan. He's never had one. He's never done it. He's had nine years to do it. And here's what he says when they ask him about his health care plan. So just a yes or no, you still do not have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. I have concepts of a lot of things. I have a, a list of people that I would like to write thank you notes to, but I haven't gotten around to it. It's just a concept that I have. But I'm not running for president of the United States. I think what is so alarming about this is the millions of Americans that watched that debate last night and still think that's my guy. And of course, there's the cult, all of the rubes, all of the rednecks, the basket of deplorables, the bottom feeders that show up to his rallies. They're in a cult. You can't reach them. Who are these tax paying, law abiding, upper middle class Americans, particularly men who he wins by a large margin that watch that and think that's who I'm voting for, a guy that doesn't have a plan, a guy who says he saw on TV somewhere, which is probably Newsmax or InfoWars, <laughs> that immigrants are eating cats and dogs. And they think, yep, this is who I want to hand the nuclear codes 
over to. The healthcare question really struck me. And I was going to ask you about how, what you think about this. He knew that his statements about the Affordable Care Act and wanting to get rid of it would be, he would be questioned on those. So either, and he's been questioned on them for nine years. He's never had a plan. So either he does not give a shit or does he simply want to be punitive and take health care away from 50 million American people? I just, I don't know. Well, I, the fundamental thing with him, everything goes back to it being transactional. Number one, he doesn't give a shit about health care because he's had health care his entire life. So he can't relate to the idea that somebody could be poor and get cancer and not have solutions as to how to get treatment. He cannot relate to that. He has no empathy for that because of his well-reported and well-documented lack of empathy and mental illnesses. And but secondly, it is going to be a transaction for him. If the insurance companies come to him and flatter him and say, you're incredible, you're the only person that's going to be able to overturn this, that's all it takes to get him to do what you want to do. Which brings me to my next clip, which is this is really incredibly important for the entire world order, which is the dangers of Vladimir Putin and his uh, illegal invasion of Ukraine. And Trump could not side with the allied forces on this, with the NATO forces on this. Let me play this clip for you. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? I want the war to stop. Okay, that is a very simple yes or no question. The problem with Vladimir Putin in Ukraine is that is just a bridge for him to then move on into Europe. Trump knows that. Victor Orban knows that. She knows that. And most importantly, all of our NATO forces know that. He is 100 million percent in the pocket, in the palm of Vladimir Putin, because Vladimir Putin and the Russians know the easiest way to get Trump on your side is to flatter him. Kim Jong-un knew this, which is why they pass love letters back and forth. She knows this. But for him to cite Viktor Orban as, oh, he says I'm one of the greatest leaders in the world. Viktor Orban is the MAGA of Europe. Mm -hmm. He is a laughingstock. He is a dictator. He is not even remotely respected in the European Union. Trump hangs out with dictators. He defends dictators. He cannot defend our ally. And I want to remind everybody, he was impeached over holding aid to Ukraine with Zelensky in the phone call. And so, I mean, that didn't even come up. There's so many egregious violations of what a president of the United States should be doing that in a two-hour debate, they can't even get to all of it. The invoking of Viktor Orban, I thought, was rich. Viktor Orban is nothing short of a dictator. And Trump idolizes him. He idolizes Putin because he wants to be a dictator. And I found it so jaw-dropping and showed such a lack of his ability to understand the world order when he said, well, I'd fix all these problems in 24 hours. These are not 24-hour fix problems. These are complicated issues that take more than just a man covered in orange makeup and bad hair to come in and make a few comments. It was jaw-dropping to me, the 24-hour comment, because I think he believes it. I think with him, he, he believes that, yes, because Vladimir Putin has told him this. I know that if you were in office, I would do this, that, or the other. I mean, we still have the time in 2016 when Trump was first in the Oval Office where he invited um, two people from Russia and excused all of the eyewitnesses. And so, I mean, it's incredibly dangerous because the next step for Putin is Poland. And then after that, it is a full, complete um, advance into Europe. And people that live in middle America don't understand this because they don't understand history. All of this dog whistle about immigrants is a play out of the Nazi playbook. He is identifying a group of people for everybody to unite against and hate. And he has all of these Republican Christian people that as 
Obama says, cling on to their guns and religion, terrified of these immigrants, when he is the one that is the criminal, as Kamala Harris so brilliantly pointed out. But I want to move on to a place where I think he spectacularly face planted, which is on the issue of abortion. Let me play this clip for you. Would you veto a na national abortion ban if it well, came to Well, I won't have to because, again, two things. Number one, she said she'll go back to Congress. She'll never get the vote. It's impossible for her to get the vote. Okay. There are several things I want to point out about the lies that he said regarding this. Number one, that babies are executed post-birth. That claim is a complete lie that has been repeated by the likes of Liz Cheney and Republicans for a very long time. So that's why I am very reluctant to give Liz Cheney a shit ton of props right now because she's been a participant in that lie. And my question is, where are the hospitals, the physicians, the nurses, the physician's assistants, the scrub techs that are saying, hold up, we all work in hospitals. Nobody is murdering babies post birth. But I digress. The second thing that is a complete lie that he repeats all the time and it goes unchecked constantly is that everybody wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. The All the legal scholars, all the Democrats, all the Republicans. I'm a Democrat and I did not want Roe v. Wade overturned. I don't know if he has completely forgotten after he won the presidency in 2016 via the Electoral College that millions of women's march with pink hats on their head because they did not want Roe v. Wade overturned because we all knew exactly what he was going to do. Republican women did not want Roe v. Wade overturned. You're talking about a, a small minority of Americans that are complete cuckoo for Cocoa Puff, Bible thumpers that think the earth is 5,000 years old, the, this tiny little fever pitch loud minority that wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. He 100% would ban abortion nationwide because it's in Project 2025 and every person surrounding him Every single person surrounding him is so far to the right on this issue. We cannot believe for one second that he is not there. And if he isn't there and he doesn't care, all the people surrounding him, the Heritage Foundation and Mike Lindell and, you know, all these other J.D. Vance and all these kooks that he hangs out with, all they have to do is march into the Oval Office and say, you're going to go down in history as the guy that finally ended this. You're going to do what Obama couldn't do and, and Reagan couldn't do. That's all he has to hear. That's how easy it is to manipulate him to take away the rights of millions of Americans and send us back to this dystopian, draconian, handmade tale bullshit that all these lunatic white men want to live in. And I mean, I have to tell you. I am disgusted after watching that debate. I am disgusted that the world sees that that's the Republican Party's best foot forward. I am embarrassed to the core of my being that I live in a place where people see that and they excuse it and they're going to vote for him against every form of critical thought that they have. It disgusts me. I cannot believe that we have to sit here and talk about that complete shit show. Lunatic. Again, it's just I can't believe that people see that and think I'm voting for him. It, it truly is shows you the low information, low IQ voter. I thought to your point about the everybody wanted it, which is a lie. I thought how Kamala Harris redirected that, talking about individual cases of women that have had to have miscarriages in parking lots and how she didn't want that, her husband didn't want that, how victims of incest that are underage, they didn't want that. And I thought that was beautifully done because it humanized it. Because these Project 25 first Donald Trump, they take it to a whole new level of dehumanization. And this is real people that have had real consequences because of his laws. And the thing that he wants to brag about is he did it, not realizing that, in fact, very few people wanted it. His orbit wanted it, but nobody else. He doesn't realize what a cell phone it is. It totally. You know, it, it because he's so transactional about being, I'm the only one that could do it. And then he uses all of this language all the time, this very manipulative language. As he lies, he says, as you know, 
as everybody knows, everybody's talked about it. I saw it on TV to help corroborate his lies. And he uses that uses that type of language throughout all of his crazy speeches. Moving along, I want to play this clip for you, which I want to show how skilled Kamala Harris is. And um, here she is speaking about our military. And I'm going to tell you that I have traveled the world as Vice President of the United States, and world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom work with you, and they say you're a disgrace. And when you then talk in this way, in a presidential debate, and deny what over and over again are court cases you have lost because you did, in fact, lose that election, it leads one to believe that perhaps we do not have in the candidate to my right the temperament or, or the ability to not be confused about fact. That's deeply troubling, and the American people deserve better. She nails that right yes. there. She completely nails it. That will fly right over the head of the basket of deplorables because it's a nuanced <laughs> argument that requires, I would say, a minimum of an average IQ of 100. But I think what she's talking about, people not understanding facts, making their own reality, this is the cancer that is Trumpism. He lied and lied and lied throughout that debate. It was unbelievable. It made my blood pressure rise that the Republicans that still go to Mar-a-Lago and kiss the ring, the Ted Cruz's, the Hollies, that nut Moses Mike Johnson, that they defend this guy all the while claiming to be these big, good family men, these big, great Christians. They are literally the biggest pieces of shit in the world because they know better. Trump is insane. We have a mental patient at the top of the ticket for the third time in a row. And some asshole that lives in some gated community somewhere feels justified for voting for him because of their fucking tax break. And I have had it up to my eyeballs with how despicable the American, a portion of the American public is for co-signing on to this, co-signing on to all of the lies, the racism, the uh, homophobia, the disgrace to the military. Mm -hmm. He does not understand military service. The least way you could s support the American military right now was his answer to the question of Ukraine. Because if Putin advances, guess who's going to go over there next to him? Trump's military. That's right. And it, it's, it, it's unbelievable how stupid a large portion of the American public is. They're complete dumbasses, clueless dumbasses that hang out in the bottom bowels of the internet and cling on to this old Reagan trickle down economic policy, which we all know is nothing short of trickle down incompetence. That's what you saw, saw last night in the debate. The most incompetent person we have ever had at the top of a ticket for the third election <laughs> cycle in a row on the global stage against a woman who has studied and prepared for this moment, who's always been underestimated her entire life because of her estrogen and because of her melanin. She was prepared. She toyed him. She mopped the floor with him. And that answer to the last question I thought was absolutely brilliant. I agree with you. I thought she handled that so beautifully. And I liked that she looked right at him and said, you are a disgrace because I believe that that is the true sentiment of world leaders and even people that just live in other countries because he is a disgrace. He is a disgrace. The people that have enabled his behavior are also disgraces. I, th I thought she did a wonderful job. I would have liked if she gigged him just a little bit more, but she d she had the perfect balance. She was presidential. She was presidential. I wanted her to gig him more, but yeah. I'm petty and I'm, I'm not petty. running for public office. Right. We're loudmouth podcasters and we would have, you know, totally tr tried to troll him more. But that's why she has the temperament to be president because she went just a little bit, just enough. But that last statement that she had, where there's a guy that is so confused about what is right, about what is decent, about what is moral. And in closing, I want to point to a couple of things. After the debate, Trump pranced <laughs> his ass into the spin room, where typically 
candidates send their surrogates and he starts making up poll numbers that he won the debate by 98 percent. All of it continues to lie. And on Fox, they basically said last night that it was a disaster for him. And then nothing on the planet cannot tell me what happened at the end of this debate wasn't highly choreographed and coordinated. Taylor Swift drops on social media a photograph of herself with a cat around her neck, fully endorses Kamala Harris and Tim Walls without any ambiguity whatsoever, and signs the post, Taylor Swift, a childless cat lady. (laughs) And if that isn't an arrow into the heart of this woman hating embarrassment at the top of the ticket for the Republican Party. I don't know what is. And I have a message to all of the American men that support this man. If you have a wife, if you have a daughter, you're a complete, total piece of shit to support this anti-woman, anti-life party. I'm more disgusted than I ever have been that we have to see this bullshit Day in, day out, because millions of Americans don't have the decency, the morality, the intelligence to say, no, enough is enough. When Dick Cheney, right, Dick Cheney, who's a total war criminal, endorses Kamala Harris and these sacks of shit American men and then the women who just do whatever their husbands say cannot get out of this right wing bullshit lying media echo chamber to do the right thing. I mean, it's really disgusting. It is disgusting. I thought she had a great night. I thought he looked like the absolute buffoon that he was. And I was tickled pink with the Taylor Swift. I do think it was choreographed because when she left her supporters, she started playing a new Taylor Swift song. So she knew that was coming. And I thought it was very well done. Somebody like Taylor Swift and Kamala Harris, that kind of stuff doesn't just happen coincidentally. They are playing chess and the Trump campaign is playing uh, Duck, Duck, Goose. Yeah. All right. It's just it's again, I want to leave you guys with how embarrassed we all should feel that this man is supported by millions of our fellow citizens. It's disgusting. It's unacceptable. This is beyond policy differences. And so we will be back tomorrow. Please subscribe here or wherever you get your podcasts and we'll see you soon. It's so good.